in the last video, we had a look at what ICAO is, how it's structured, and some of the history behind it being formed. In this video, we will begin to look at the articles laid out by ICAO and how they impact aviation. Before we begin looking at the articles themselves, it is worth clarifying some of the terminology used in them. When they refer to a state, this simply means a member nation of ICAO. Article 1 states that the contracting states recognise that every state has complete and exclusive sovereignty over the airspace above its territory. This means that the airspace over a state ultimately belongs to that state. This ensures that ICAO is complying with the previously established Paris Convention of 1919. Article 2 simply exists in order to clarify Article 1. It clarifies the definition of the land that is covered when ICAO refers to a state. Article 3 states that the ICAO articles are only applicable to civil aviation. It also defines state aircraft. This term captures all military and emergency service aircraft. It defines that state aircraft cannot fly over the territory of other states without prior authorization by that state. This is important as this is not required by civil aircraft. Finally, it mentions that states should consider the safety of civil aircraft navigating their airspace when regulating state aircraft. This covers things like the definition of restricted military airspace. In 1998, Article 3 was extended. This section was called 3BIS. It outlines that every state must refrain from resorting to using weapons against civil aircraft in flight, and that if an aircraft is intercepted, the lives on board and the safety of the aircraft must not be endangered. However, in order to protect states' rights, they've added a clause that explicitly entitles states to require any civil aircraft to land if it is flying over its territory without authority or is operating in some manner that is inconsistent with the ICAO Convention. Additionally, it explicitly states that all civil aircraft have to comply with these requests and that any violation of this shall be punished by severe penalties by the nation responsible for the aircraft. Article 4 states that each contracting state agrees not to use civil aviation for any purpose inconsistent with the aims of this convention. This is aimed at preventing states from using civil aircraft for performing military duties. Article 5 outlines the rights of non-scheduled flights. Non-scheduled flights are simply aircraft that are not scheduled international flights. This would cover private and charter flights. It specifies that states must allow all non-scheduled aircraft to fly into or through their airspace and to be able to land in them without prior permission. The states being overflown are however permitted to require any overflying aircraft to land at one of their airports. Finally, if a state has hazardous areas, such as inaccessible mountainous areas or areas with little or no nav aids, they are permitted to require overflying aircraft to follow predefined routes over their territory or to have to request special permission to fly outside of these routes. Article 6 complements Article 5 by defining the rights of scheduled air services. It states that scheduled international flights do not have the implicit right to overfly another country and they first have to get permission from that state. Article 7 defines cabotage rights in aviation. The word cabotage actually predates aviation and was originally referred to shipping. Cabotage is the right to operate sea, air or other transport services within a particular territory. ICAO specifically have laid out in this article that states 
have the right to refuse permission to other states who wish to perform commercial domestic flights in that state. Additionally, no state should enter an exclusivity contract for domestic flights in a state other than the state the aircraft belongs to. Article 8 looks at pilotless aircraft. It is worth noting that when this was written it was referring to large unmanned aerial vehicles and does not refer to private or commercial drones as there is not currently an ICAO requirement to register these. Pilotless aircraft shall require special authorization by the states they are flown in and each state must ensure that pilotless aircraft shall be controlled as to remove danger to civil aircraft. Article 9 covers prohibited areas. Each state, for military or safety reasons, restrict or prohibit aircraft from other states from overflying certain regions as long as they don't discriminate between scheduled international flights for themselves versus other states. A good example of this right being extensively used is in China, where less than 30% of their airspace can be used by commercial airlines. States reserve the right to immediately, temporarily prohibit flying over any or all, any all of its territory, as long as it applies to all states and doesn't discriminate. This right was probably most famously used on September the 11th, 2001, when the USA grounded all civil aircraft across the country. Finally, states may require any aircraft infringing airspace due to the above points to land at an airport belonging to that state. Article 10 covers international customs. While a state is not required to implement customs airports, Article 10 states that any aircraft not protected by other articles may be required to land at a customs airport when entering a state's territory for examination. Additionally, on departure, a state may also require an aircraft to land at a departure customs airport. In the next few videos, we will continue to cover the rest of the ICAO articles. If you have any corrections or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. For now, thank you for watching.